Hello and welcome to an overview of 3D Coat, a wonderful sculpting, retopology, and texture painting application. In this tutorial series, I'm just going to give a basic overview of all the tools available to you in 3D Coat. I'm not going to go through each and every single one individually, but I will discuss the most important ones so that you can get started with your next 3D project. In this first part, I'm going to be going over the interface, how 3D Coat is organized, how you can change it to fit your needs, and generally how to navigate the software. When you first open 3D Coat, you'll be presented with a pop-up that looks like this. Now this uh, will basically just give you several different starting points for your project. You can start with either sculpting, or retopology, or painting, or UV unwrapping, wherever stage you're in production. I'm not going to be using this, so I'm just going to close it here. Now let's just look at the software itself. Now one of the most important things to understand about 3D Coat is that it's organized into what are called rooms. You have the paint room, the tweak room, retopo room, UV room, sculpt room, and render room. The reason why this is important is because what room you're in will change what tools are available to you and what options you have up here in the top menu bar. As you see, when we're in the sculpt room, we have access to things like symmetry, geometry, but when we're in the, UV, the retopo room, we get more options like retopo and bake. And when we're in paint room, we get textures, and when we're in the render room, uh, well, we get some of the same options there. Probably the more drastic difference that you would have immediately noticed, though, is that the windows and the tools that we have available change completely from room to room. So you'll see the sculpt room has all of the voxel sculpting tools, as well as several windows that you would commonly associate with the tasks you need to do while you're sculpting. Same thing with the retopo room, the UV room, tweak room, paint room, etc. Now these layouts are not set in stone, however. I'll be sticking with the sculpt room for most of this. Over on the right side, you'll see all these different panels. And I prefer to call these windows because that's what the software calls them, windows. So I've got things like alpha, brush options, models, and splines. And I can click on any one of these to reveal what that tab, what that window contains. But I can also rearrange them. So I can go to, say, my brush options, and I can drag it, and you'll see it tears off. And I can bring it to, say, this panel right here, this window. And now it has become docked with this section, which, of course, its size can be changed to fit whatever monitor or whatever organizational structure you need. So I'll click on my brush options, and there they are. I could also create an entirely new panel with just that. And then I can dock other windows with that same panel. I'm going to bring that back real quick. I could also just tear it off and make it its own uh, floating window. Or I can put it here on the side and make an entirely new section. So I'm just going to tear it off and make it a floating panel. This is especially useful if you have uh, multiple monitors. You could take several windows in, put them off on your alternate screen. But I've only got the one. So one other thing I could do is I could close it. Now if I close it, I can't find it anymore. It's not here. If you want to get any window back, or if you want to add some new windows in, like say you wanted your UV window to be here, which you can find in the retopology room. If I go to Sculpt, I can go to Windows, and these would show up under Pop-ups, and there was Brush Options. That's the one I just got rid of, so I can click that, and now it's a floating window again, and I can redock it with the tab that it was originally a part of. As you can see, there are lots of different windows. There's Models, which is the same Models panel that is right here along with a whole host of others. Now over on the left, you'll see several different tools. Now these are unique to each room, but I'll stick with the sculpt room for now. None of these have hotkeys associated with them, so you just have to scroll through and click to use them. But if you want to give them one, you'll see that on any 
one of these. You'll see that at the end of the description it says end to define a hotkey. So the way that will work is that I'll go to, let's say, oh, I don't know. Let's go to my curves tool. It doesn't have a hotkey yet, so if I hit the end key on my keyboard, end, and it'll ask me to define a hotkey. So this uses control and shift. So I'm going to use, since it's curves, I'm going to use shift to C for curves. And now you'll see at the end of the description it says shift C. So now if I hit shift C, I am now using that tool. Let's get out of that. So once you've defined your hotkeys and once you've organized your windows to your liking, you are now ready to get started. That about does it for the necessary basics of the interface. In the next tutorial, I will talk about uh, the voxel sculpt room because that is where most of your projects in 3D Coat will begin.